Welcome to Let's Play Dot Hack GU Volume 1 Rebirth. I'm your host, Naka Talili. Now, a number of years after the end of the first Dot Hack games, there was a great fire at CC Corp. The fire destroyed much of the data of the world, a very popular MMORPG. Now with all of this data destroyed, without Harold around to recreate it, the world was in a very dire situation. CC Corp did manage to save the game though, by combining what data they could salvage with that of a steampunk-esque game that they were developing alternatively. Thus the world had changed, and the world was reborn. As R2. Our story follows a boy by the name of Haseo. As he starts the game for the very first time. Wow, this is cool. Hey. Hey, you. You, the adept rogue. Yeah, you. I'm talking to you. So, I take it this is your first time playing this game. Yeah, I just finished installing it to my PC. Well, if you wish, we will be honored to show you around. Huh? I am sure you would like to become well acquainted as soon as possible. Just say yes and come along with us. I promise you won't regret it. Uh. All right, it is decided then. Here, I'll hand you my member address. Member addresses are short email addresses that you can only use in the world. Shortmail allows you to instantly send and receive messages from any player online in the world. You can only invite people that you have member addresses for to join into your party. All right, so let's open the menu. Press the triangle button to open it.
Right off the bat, we're greeted with a rather long and elaborate tutorial on how to play the game. And though I do praise this, especially since it's integrated into the story and makes sense, all of you guys at home don't really need to know all of this. I could explain it all myself a lot quicker for what you need to know. But the vast majority of this is voiced over, so I'm going to let it run in its entirety. Now, I told us to press triangle to open the menu, select party, this is a list of all the people who have a member address. Choose our names from this list, and then press the X button. So, we get to add the two of them to our party. Okay, let's have some fun. I am honored to lend you my sword. Okay, great. Now your party is complete. And how that works is actually very similar to the previous game. So those of you that have watched my Let's Play of the first four games, this will all seem a lot pretty uh, similar. Remember, you can only invite people logged into the world. Enough with the formalities. Should we go on to your first adventure? Let's go stab stuff. Now right here in town, ooh, that didn't right. Let's start by changing the settings now that we actually have some semblance of control over our character. Customize, don't care. There's not actually much I can do in the way of customization. Skill trigger, that's all I got. A lot of this will be... Let's see here. A lot of this will be explained not, or it will be explained shortly. But long as I'm here, there's a save point right here in town, not terribly far from the warp gate. All you have to do is talk to him. I don't actually feel like saving right now. The chaos gate will send us to our various areas. There's an item shop just over there to the right. Well, let's go on our first adventure. This is a transporter called the chaos gate. Players can use this to travel from the root town to other locations. Choose warp menu. Okay. In the world, all locations except for root towns, fields, and dungeons are called areas. That's actually a... That's not exactly true. Um, fields and dungeons are actually... They work differently than they did in the first four games. In the original games, you had your field that you would always warp into, and then you would go find the dungeon and go down. In GU, they've essentially combined them, so there is only... Sometimes you can warp to a field area, sometimes you can warp to a dungeon area, but you don't go from one to the other. When you're done with your field area, there's no dungeon at the end of it. I mean, it's, it actually works out pretty well. You can warp to these areas by combining three words at the Chaos Gate. These words determine the type of area, monster strength, and so on. All right, let's try out the word selection. Choose area word from the menu. Now this does work pretty much just like the original games. Now we have a couple options here. They are going to have us do area word, but if we see on the message board or a friend wants to go somewhere or something, that'll show up under bookmark, so we don't have to bother putting in the keywords ourselves. If we just want the game to make us an area randomly from the keywords we know, we can go to random. Warp record will show all the areas we've been to in the past, and then if cancel and to town will take us to another town. Um, area word, though, lets us make our own word, or our own area, out of keywords. This is where you input the words. The thing at the top is the word plate. You combine the three words in here to create the area you want to go. The gyro at the left of the screen shows your current stock of words. You can get more words by getting information from other players, emails, and forums. Okay, why don't you give it a try? 
Let's start with the first word. Choose courageous from your stock. Seeing as we're essentially a noob, we actually only have courageous. Engaging. Daydream. Okay, now you can go to your first area. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. See the mark left of the area word? That's a server symbol. It indicates the server you're currently in. Right now, it's showing triangle for Delta. So, as you can see, we are all in the Delta server. If it's a different server, you'll go to another area even with the same area word. This will make more sense once we open up more towns. Just know for the time being that Delta's all we got. Pay attention to the server symbol when invited to an area by a friend. If you want to know more, just check out some of the forums. Right, then we're off to Delta Courageous Engaging Daydream. And away we go. So, we've all been transported to a field. Open your map to take a look at the layout. Go ahead and press the select button on the controller. All right. If you look around, I mean, this area does look nice. That's one thing that they act very much improved on over the previous games is just the graphics. I mean, looking around, what the crap is that in the background? I don't know, but it's awesome. But regardless, they want us to take a look at the map, so press select. And we see the whole map. This is the area map. Use this screen to check current position, mission info, and any other information you may need. First, let's take a look at what our mission is. Go ahead and press the X button. Okay. This is our mission. Now, generally, these are. You get a mission in each of the various areas you go to, but in the end, they're not generally not that complicated. I mean, there's kinds like this, where it pretty much just says, beat everything up. So it's nothing terribly special, but it does add a bit of uniqueness, as opposed to in the previous games, when it was simply warp in, kill everything, get to the bottom. Missions are basically, um... Well, I guess they're sort of like our objective for the area. It looks like this is a collection mission. And like I said, there it's really not that complicated. There's really only one or two different kinds. We must collect three symbol fragments and make our way to the Beast Temple. The symbol fragments are in treasure chests found on the altars. The altars are protected by monsters, so the only options are to open the treasure without being seen. Or defeat the monsters first, then open the treasure. These are the altar icons. I suggest we first head to each of these icons and open the treasure chests. Now, this is the icon for the Beast Temple, which is our final destination. Okay, now that we've confirmed what our mission is, let's be on our way! Yeah, and the short of it is that we've got three little things there. We have to go to each one, open a treasure chest, they'll give us an item to go into the beast tent temple, and get a thing. So we get to go beat up dudes, because there's probably dudes guarding the uh, altars. Wait up, Asta. You forgot one more thing. Darn it. Okay, this time let's really get going. If you're unsure where the Beast Temple or the Altars are, just press the Select button to check the map. This is a pretty simple map, so it's not that really... It's really not that big a deal, but you can get to some pretty big areas later on. And as he mentioned, this is how we leave. Unlike in the original games, where as long as you were on the field, you could pour it out, since there really is no difference between fields and dungeons, they put in these... things. I forget what they're called. Oh well, not important. 
Alright, so let's go beat up some stuff. Now, one semi-complaint that I have is that the camera is actually very quick. It's very touchy. So, I mean, it's really nice if, oh, I want to see behind me. And you can real quick get the camera back there. But if you just want to do some fine movements, this is especially bothersome for me because I tend to... Whoop, I tend to steer with the camera. So it makes it a little trickier for me to steer. Nice! We found an altar already. Yes, because there was totally one on the island just below us. Surprise attack! And when you're near an enemy, if you manage to sneak up behind them... See if I can get... There Good. we are. Now, press the X button for a surprise attack. hi <laughs> Once the battle begins, the battle area spreads out like this. The battle area is surrounded by the battle fence, so it's virtually impossible for anyone to escape. Now that is one... The one main difference between these games and the previous games is the battles. So this will actually be somewhere to learn something new. And I will say I actually rather like how the battle system works in these games. That battle fence that he mentioned Maybe it's just me, but I would really like it if it was a bit bigger. I always feel cramped in these. The only way to escape from a battle is with an item called a smoke screen. Which I will never use, so it's not that big a deal. Asta and I don't have one right now, so we'll have to fight it out. Alright. Press X to beat on things. <laughs> You're not too bad. Yeah. Now, as he's going to explain here in a second, but um, you have your you have a, a, a regular combo that you can do with your regular attack instead of in the previous game where it's just hit a button, do an attack, hit a button, do an attack. And depending on your weapon, there are different nifty little attacks that you can do at the end of a combo. Like I did a thing there where I actually had to tap the button really quick and do a whole bunch of damage. Not so difficult, huh? Then there's a build-up attack here, where we can hold down X to hit him really hard once. Yeah, keep it up. That's it. Just continue fighting like that. Now some enemies will guard, and if you do that charge-up attack, if memory serves, it will break their guard. So that tends to make it a bit easier to um. Overall, there's been a lot added to the battle system. It's actually a uh, much more involved battle system. Oh, there we are. Regular attack, combo attack, charge attack, and then we can guard with circle, which, eh, I maybe do it sometimes. Hey, you! And of course, I'm just level 1, and both of them are level 10. But we got stuff out of it. And now we can open our chest. And we get a symbol fragment, which we will need one of these from each of our chests. Now I suppose I can start talking about um, how I'm gonna handle the less play just a little bit here. All right, oh. we found another altar. Yes, because the map totally told me there was one on the next island. That's why I went this way. I'll teach you about using skills to attack. Woo, fancy. Well, I'll talk about that in a second. I will say you won't necessarily always get a surprise attack, but all these guys are looking away from me, so it's really easy to. If you approach from the front, they will see you, and you can't get a surprise attack. Makes sense. They're ours. Regular and combo attacks are just simply normal attacks. Skills enable you to do much more damage to your enemies. Yeah, the, um, in the first game, if you ever wanted to use a special ability, you got really adept at going through the menu really fast to get to it. In here, on the other hand, they actually give you a shortcut. The skill trigger. 
press R1 and you'll be ready to do an attack right away that you can set to one of the various buttons. Okay, what you see here is the skill trigger menu. Do you see the four panels? You can press the button that corresponds to each panel to execute the different arts. Now try it out by using the arts, Gale Blade. Considering that's the only one I have, uh, that one. And it was right. nifty. Perfect. The skill trigger is not just a shortcut. It can also be used to stop enemy attacks, or it can be used to interrupt one of your own. Say I'm involved in something big and fancy and I see somebody attacking me from behind. Hit skill trigger in the middle of it, turn around, bash them before their, before their attack connects. And maybe I couldn't block because I was in the middle of an attack. Aren't you forgetting something important, EO-10? There is an even more important use for the skill trigger. Of course I haven't forgotten. You're talking about Rengeki, right? Good ol' Rengeki. Yeah, beat on somebody until rings, until these uh, blue and purple rings start showing up around them. Do a skill on them, and fancy things happen. Press the R1 button to use the skill trigger now. Now, of course, I can choose different enemies. Actually, no, they're only going to let me do it on the one. Oh, uh, let's see here. Da 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 da. There you go. Very well. Shall we let him play as he wishes? Not considering they all have like one HP left at this That's point. That's a good idea. All right, Haseo. It's all up to you now. Stabbing things. Go. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Now we can go on to our, our uh, third thing now. Now I will say this game actually... Now this game actually kind of assumes that you have played, or not played, but watched Dot Hack Roots. This will be quick. As such, I'm probably going to be... Yeah, as such, I'm going to be doing my best to splice in some scenes from Roots. And, um... To help everyone actually explain what's going on. So that's it. I kind of got hit there, but I was talking and not paying attention. Oh man, I'm almost level 2! Awesome job! Alright, let's finish off by heading for the Beast Temple. Okay, now use the map to check your position, just like we taught you. This is a pretty small area. I don't know if I need to use my map just to figure out where I'm going. Where the heck is this temple? Oh wait, there we go. Uh, yeah, as I was saying, though, the game kind of assumes that you've watched um, Dot Hack Roots to really know what's going on in here, much more so than Dot Hack Sign was important to the original four games. You could get away with not having seen Sign. So I'm going to do my best to make sure everybody is filled in on what exactly is going on. That said, one thing that I actually really like about Roots is for the longest time, I kind of didn't like Haseo. And having sat down and watched Dot Hack Roots again recently, I actually have a bit better opinion about him, and I've got my own explanation for why a lot of things happen the way they happen. So I'm going to do my best to make sure everyone understands what's going on, as you were kind of intended to understand. 
Oh, we finally found the Beast Temple, so let's go in. Now, the Beast Temple normally took you to a dungeon, where you then had a whole bunch more areas to go to. Here, not so much. If you get into a field area like this, this is it. This is a statue of Fulset, the god of law. We just call it the Beast Statue. But I think in the game's story, it's supposed to be an important god or something. You see that treasure box? That's the offering to the Beast Statue. There's a rare item inside of that that you can only get in this area. Go ahead and open it, Haseo. Sure. Go ahead. You're still a noob. You need all the help you can get. And so the reward is ours. 